Hello and welcome to the print. On Wednesday, an important development took place in India's mining sector. The Ministry of Mines in a first launched the auction of 20 blocks of critical and strategic minerals, which includes lithium, molybdenum, rare earth elements, among others. The total worth of these minerals in the 20 blocks is estimated to be rupees 45,000 crore. The move will go a long way in addressing the supply chain vulnerabilities of critical minerals, which are vital to technology and industry, and in ensuring India's energy security. Blocks up for auction are located across seven states and one union territory. These are Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Jharkhand, Urissa, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, and Jammu and Kashmir. There are two lithium blocks in the list, one in Jammu and Kashmir and the other in Chhattisgarh. The 5.9 million ton lithium reserve discovered by the Geological Survey of India in the Riasi district of Jammu and Kashmir in February this year is also on the auction list. The notice for inviting bids was launched yesterday. The whole bidding process will be completed in 103 days. The move is significant as post the amendments to the Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act 1957 in August 2023, the Union Government got the power to auction critical minerals. Earlier, only government agencies were allowed to explore and mine these minerals. The amendments to the MMDR Act also paved the way for private commercial mining of six critical minerals – lithium, beryllium, niobium, tantalum, titanium and zirconium – and deep-seated minerals like gold, silver and copper. In this broadcast, I will tell you more about why the development is important and what it means for India's critical mineral sector. To start with, let me tell you what are the critical mineral deposits that were found in the 20 blocks identified by the Mines Ministry. The blocks up for auction, which will be conducted online, contain minerals such as lithium, rare earth elements, graphite, molybdenum, gloconite, chromium, lithium, nickel, potash, and phosphorite, among others. So why are these minerals critical and where are they used? Critical minerals are essential for economic development and national security of the country in order to ensure self-reliance and to address the vulnerability in its supply chain. From mobile phones to electric vehicles, solar panels, semiconductors and wind turbines, all modern technologies are dependent on critical minerals such as lithium, graphite, cobalt, thallium and rare earth. From mobile phones to electric vehicles, solar panels, semiconductors and wind turbines, all modern technologies are dependent on critical minerals. Presently, India is dependent on China and other countries to meet its requirement of critical minerals and rare earth elements, which are the building blocks of modern day technology. Lithium, for instance, is used in rechargeable batteries, phones, computers, cameras and electric vehicles, hydrogen fuel storage, military ballistic armor, refined petroleum products, among others. Graphite is used in batteries, lubricants, fuel cells for EVs and electric vehicles. Molybdenum is used in steel alloys, pigments and dyes, electricals and electronics. Platinum group of elements is used in electronic equipment used by the military, auto catalysts, medicines. Rare earth elements is used in permanent magnets for electricity generators and motors, catalysts, polishing, batteries, electronics, defense technologies, wind energy sector, aviation and space. With the launch of the auction, the Ministry of Mines will now start applying for clearances. Some 23 clearances are required from the central ministries and state governments before successful bidders can start mining. Of the 20 blocks, 16 are up for a composite license, which means that they can undertake prospecting operations followed by mining and 4 for a mining lease alone. Speaking at a press conference following the launch on Wednesday, Union Mines Minister Pralad Joshi said that so far India had always focused on major minerals and surficial minerals. For the first time, 
critical and deep seated minerals have been identified and exploration is being done at various levels. So far, the ministry has identified 100 blocks out of which the first tranche of 20 blocks have been put for auction. Joshi further said that since 2014, when the Narendra Modi-led India government came to power, several policy initiatives have been taken to give a push to the critical mining sector. These include amendments to the Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act 1957 this year. Last month, the centre approved royalty rates of 3% each for lithium and niobium and 1% for rare earth elements. Over the last year, India has undertaken a slew of initiatives in the critical mineral sector. For instance, in June, the government released a comprehensive list of 30 critical minerals. India also joined the Mineral Security Partnership, a US-led alliance of 40 developed countries in June to ensure that critical minerals are produced, processed and recycled in a manner that supports the ability of countries to realize the full economic development benefit of their geological endowments. All the moves, including Wednesday's launch of first tranche of auction of critical minerals, will go a long way in addressing the supply chain vulnerabilities of these minerals. That's all for now. This is Moshumi Das Gupta for The Print. Thank you for watching The Print. Do log on to The Print's YouTube channel to know more about latest news development and news analysis.